Welcome. Today we wanted to talk to you about a tool for you to succeed in student affairs work, to connect with students, and to be the best at what you do. It's called assessment. The world has not stopped changing since 56 years ago when UMass Boston was founded. Our student generation has grown from the idealistic baby boomers to the competitive Gen X to the globalist Gen Y and eventually to the realistic Gen Z. This constant, if not exponential, change requires us in student affairs to not only understand the change, but also to adapt to it. But how? You must be skilled now in the way we make decisions based on a judgment, life experience, and gut feelings. After all, we are humans working with humans, and every situation is unique. There is no exact formula to follow. An offering that motivates one student to thrive might just not be applicable to another student who needs his fundamental needs met. And you're right. What we are introducing today is not a replacement for your classic approach, but rather a reinforcement for it, using the data at your disposal. Your intuition is still your professional advantage, and now data you collect can answer two more questions for you. One. Are your students interested in the workshop, the student leader training, or the town hall meeting that you plan to offer? Two, how does this offering impact students after it's implemented? Are they more informed? Do they feel relieved and trusted? Do they know how to address a new situation that was discussed? And these data will help you decide your next step. To either increase the offering or look at an alternative, data helps you keep your eyes on the ball. Student affairs work is art and is also science. Our objective can be categorized into two groups: to diagnose and treat the weaknesses of our current methodology. And to identify and promote its strength. Using the pandemic lingo, you will only know what situation you are looking at with testing, testing, testing. And the same applies in student affairs work. You will see a much clearer picture with assessment, assessment, assessment. So, what exactly is assessment? Simply put, it's a process using data to design and implement a project, evaluate a project performance, use the evaluation to assist further modification, and to inform higher-level decision making. For example, our well-planned freshman orientation. How do students think it went? Did they learn the information we wanted to pass along? Was the orientation pace too fast or too slow? What's students' favorite part of it? The goal of assessment is to find out what we don't really already know, and we want this answer on at least three levels: student needs, student attitudes, and student impact. The quickest assessment tool is survey. Let me give you some examples. You know more students and their stories than many could imagine, but do you know that in the 2018 student insecurity survey, a striking 62% of our students experience at least one form of insecurity: hunger, housing insecurity, and even homelessness. That must inform our focus on some of our work. 
Good news is that we see a four percent improvement in 2019 in the right direction. We can also look at the needs of graduate students from a graduate student assembly survey in 2018. Their results reinforce our notion that graduate students especially rely on de departmental resources instead of campus resources. They also confirm that the most salient issue facing graduate students are financial issues. If they were to attend any campus events. They prefer well-organized academic events, such as comeback seminars, and professional events, such as sponsored industry expert series. Another group of assessment work is about student attitude, which loosely refers to how students think about themselves, their priorities, and their abilities. We have asked all of these questions. Our Project CEO survey offers a benchmark against the 50 peer universities across the country, where our students' greatest self-evaluated strength is professionalism and work ethic, compared to the peers who chose problem solving. Co-curricular experience at UMass Boston provides strong contribution, 28 to 36 percent. To relationship building skill sets, but lower than at peer universities. Twenty-four percent of our students work sixteen to thirty hours per week, and they rely on their off-campus job for skill development thirteen percent more heavily than national average. When it comes to what they care about, about seventy-five percent of the students. Value social involvement, co-curricular participation, and overall well-being very much or quite a bit, which motivates us to continue to improve our service. We also find it reassuring that the percentage of students who have been reached by our work, and as a result are aware of how to access campus resources on counseling and violation. Has increased five to fifteen percent. Our impact surveys provide direct evidence for how well we support students. On the diagnosis front, we have noticed that residential students who live on campus in 2018 to 2019 show two percent lower retention rate than commuting students. And this finding has helped us in identifying effective intervention strategies. On the positive side, we find that students who belong to a、uh, student activity groups are four percent easier to be retained and show 0.08 higher GPA. Consistent with another independent study that finds students who have a job or club leadership role on campus. Show seven to ten percent higher retention rate. So going forward, we might keep our focus on promoting student well-being and performance through co-curricular participation. Of course, we are also planning on applying other assessment tools, such as the focus group met method that housing department is already using. The experiment test. We have set for fall semester, and the institutional research analysis that we are collaborating along with the Office of Student Institutional Research. So you see, the road to assessment does not lead to replacing decision making, but to inform decision making with new findings. Our work in student affairs are still about a trade off. That needs your well-trained intuition and experience, but one that could be strengthened by data assessment. Ultimately, we're working our best towards the goal we've already had in mind, which is to transform our good decisions into better ones. <laughs>